Hello, I'm Ingrid Hodger. Our top stories. Bank raid in downtown Buckingham. University raises awareness for World Diabetes Day. New Milton Keynes Stadium comes with retail compound. Buckingham's reputation as a sleepy, law-abiding market town was holed in the early hours of Tuesday morning when robbers raided the NatWest Bank on Market Hill in the centre of town. Camilo Martinez has this report. NatWest Bank was broken into by burglars on Tuesday morning. The offenders gained entry to the bank and stole a large amount of cash. The bank was broken into the early hours of Tuesday morning and Thames Valley police were unavailable for an interview. The BBC has reported that the criminals may have gotten away with as much as £25,000. The branch manager also refused to be interviewed. However, he did say that the police investigation is ongoing and the bank would resume normal service immediately. Thames Valley Police is appealing for witnesses, so if you were around Market Hill at 4.30 a.m. on Tuesday, the 13th of November, please contact them. This is Camilo Martinez, Buckingham News. Few people realize that every year there are more deaths in the world from diabetes than from AIDS, malaria and tuberculosis combined. To mark World Diabetes Day, the university professor Mike Hawthorne, one of the leading researchers into the disease, launched an exhibition and gave a lecture on how diabetes is linked to the issue of obesity. Numuni Diallo reports. Professor Cawthorne has coined a phrase, diabetes, to show the connection between diabetes and obesity. In his lecture, he concentrated on type 2 diabetes and the environmental and genetic factors that can result in this disease. To produce more insulin to overcome the insulin resistance and the result is eventually you get failure to produce sufficient insulin and that's when you get diabetes. We are yet to find a cure for diabetes but it can be controlled with diet and medication. We talked to Professor Cothern who gave us the reason why diabetes has increased. Lifestyle, mobility, because of people like some of you here who've come from one country to another country to a different diet. Movement, urbanization, movement from rural communities which were farming so the people would eat what they grow, whereas they come to an urban society, there is a fridge with 24-hour access to food and things like ice cream and Coca-Cola. What food should we avoid? There's nothing that should be avoided completely. Nothing in excess. But be aware of things like sh simple sugars, sweetness. Uh, be aware of fat content of foods and portion size. The event appeared to be a success for raising awareness for World Diabetes Day. This is Numuni Diallo from Buckingham News. He was smooth, he was saturnine, he was suave, with a boyish grin that, and words that made women, well, drop everything. Are we talking about Elvis here? No, the 19th century poet Lord Byron. In a lecture on Tuesday, Graham Roos, the university's creative artist in residence, put forward the proposition that Byron was, in fact, the first ever rock star. We send Jay Sumanandasa to check the theory. The University of Buckingham was delighted to welcome decorated writer, performer and producer Graham Roos, who gave a talk exploring the idea that Lord Byron is the progenitor of the model cult of celebrity. His work has appeared in television, film, opera, and theatre, among others, and he's also the author of two books. I caught up with him after his lecture. I came across Byron through reading uh, biographies on Oscar Wilde, who arguably is the other first modern celebrity who 
guarded his own image and, and carefully constructed a public image. You wrote and directed your first play during your time at Buckingham University. Was your play a success? And what did you study? Oh yes, my, my first play, 1989, it's called A Study in Self-Indulgence, which I did at Radcliffe Theatre, uh, which I made quite a bit of money out of. What enticed you to explore the life of Lord Byron? I'd read about Byron in other people's biographies, and they'd all said uh, how much they were inspired by him. So he was obviously a progenitor to a lot of artists. And then I saw the film Gothic by Ken Russell, and that really, I thought, this is all quite strange and interesting, and I'd like to, I'd like to explore this further. How does it feel to be the first creative artist in residence at the University of Buckingham. Yes. Well, yeah, I, it's a great honour. I feel very privileged uh, and I hope I can do things to help change the cultural life of the students at the University. Has Lord Byron influenced you in terms of your personal life? Not really. No. Apart from it's taken four years out of my life in making a film that never finally got to see the light of day as I would have liked. So, yes, he's certainly taken up quite a long time. Mr Roos certainly came across as an extremely charismatic character who has a way with words. His poetry is vivid, catchy and thought-provoking. And the audience left the Sunday Lecture Theatre debating how important Lord Byron's influence was on a present-day rock star. This is Jason Manadasa, Buckingham News. Stadium MK in Milton Keynes, home to the MK Dons, is currently undergoing a major revamp. Even if your interest in football is nil, the redevelopment is home to a wealth of new shops that could end up giving your credit card the yellow card. Chris Gomez has the story. We're here outside the new and refurbished Milton Keynes Don Stadium, where, believe it or not, the entrance is actually through the hotel lobby, where guests can reserve a special room to have a special view of the match. The stadium of MK has been given a multi-million pound makeover. As you can see, work is still currently ongoing, so I caught up with the head foreman of the construction site to find out more. Uh, Andy, what, when did this project start? My part of the project started in May this year, uh, primarily to, to build a shell and core for the stadium. And what renovations and changes have been made to the stadium? There's been a lot of additional work, it's actually to clad it in, got a new roof on at level 5, uh, and open up open space within the shell and core. Uh, we've had to put the two formulate our building plan along the lines of what was in existence. So we're here driving to the front entrance of the stadium with the building foreman. That's the most complicated bit of, of the stadium works around because you've got a live superstore, the box office, and we've got to do our building works around that. So it, it, it's, it's, it takes a massive amount of coordination. Have any other businesses been affected since the works have started? I think every business has uh, not suffered, but has had to come to terms with other work, start working around them, you know, and I think it's been to their benefit, actually. So the, the, this is also a new hotel? But it's, it, that's been there five years, oh, but it's all part of the same deal. But this is the new, the new product. This is the new set of units. Marks and Spencer's now. This project has also encouraged businesses such as this sports store to erect in the local area. Speaking here with a contractor, um, could you tell me when this project will be finished? Uh, yeah, it, it's going to finish maybe end of this month or earlier on December. As we have heard today, the construction and refurbishment of the Milton Keynes Don Stadium will bring many job opportunities for local areas such as Milton Keynes and Buckingham. I'm Chris Gomez for the Buckingham News. A squad of pupils from Buckingham's elite Stowe School was bussed into a London demo this week by their own headmaster. Art-loving Dr Anthony Wallensteiner mobilised his Stowe young ones to reinforce a campaign to save a West End street famed for its art galleries from property developers. Jason Monandasa reports. The Stowe Brigade included Dr Wallensteiner's daughter, Imogen. She was in good company. Many celebs are back in the campaign. They include Graham Norton, Mary Portas, Bill Nye, and Lady Antonia Frazier. More than 11,000 people have signed protest petition against a 90 million plan to demolish Cork Street and build luxury apartments on the Mayfair site. Art galleries in Cork Street will put out of business as a result. 
And as the Stowe pupils crowded in the Alpha Gallery on Tuesday, the headmaster told them the galleries which launched the careers of artists like Barbara Hepworth, Lucian Freud and Francis Bacon had to be saved. Cork Street was a hugely important part of Britain's heritage and the nation mustn't allow it to be lost, said Dr. Valerstein. When Alex Biddle, our cameraman, turned up at Gorko to film University of Buckingham's match against Great Linford, he thought it would be 90 minutes of checking that the camera battery hadn't died. But he was wrong. Alex had found himself cooperated into the team. Camilo Martinez tells us what happened next. University of Buckingham FC took on Great Linford over Remembrance Day weekend, both teams paying their respects with a one-minute silence. Both teams went into the game on 19 points. For Buckingham, it was crunch time, having put a run of bad results behind them the previous week. Unfortunately, things started disastrously when Infor scored early in the first half after a mix up between the defense and the goalkeeper. Will McPhee captain the side again with club captain Sholefak Benro on the bench, and it was McPhee who first came close to equalizing only to collide with the goalkeeper. Soon after, Alex Biddle, usually the substitute goalkeeper, leveled the scoring with a smart finish. Ten minutes later, Biddle put Buckingham ahead after a perfect throw ball from Will McFay. Biddle then grabbed his third after finishing off another smart ball from the captain McFay. The back four played excellently while James Whitecross and Chris Candler create chances from the midfield. <laughs> Captain Will McPhee made the score 4, after a clever finish from the left side of the pitch. In the second half, Buckingham resisted increased pressure from Great Linford to wind up 4-3 winners. So Buckingham remains second in North Box League Division 1. This is Camilo Martinez, Buckingham News. Nice one, Alex. In this week's episode of Cooking With, Damien Wilson takes us on a trip to the Turks and Caicos Islands with an exotic recipe for shrimp pasta. Ozzy Abaseki went along to fill his not insubstantial boots. I'm here with Damien for this week's episode of Cooking With. So Damien, what are you cooking for us today? Uh, today I'm doing a simple shrimp pasta with a green salad. Um, and for this, we're going to need a few items. Of course, you're going to need your pasta. First, you're going to need some grated cheddar and grated mozzarella, some minced garlic, some lightly chopped onions, some grated parmesan, uh, peppers, mushrooms, my iceberg lettuce for my salad and a few cherry tomatoes and we have uh we're going to use this cabanera sauce as I make probably best if you want to get a good flavor in your pasta to use some basil infused olive oil gives it a really good flavor now once I add my basil my salt then I'm going to add my pasta just going to Drain the rest of the water off of our pasta. Now that our pasta is done, our prawns are done, sauce is done, we just add it all together like a nice uh, coming together of a choir. You know, they all just play their part. Of course, this is my favorite part. Just mixing all of this together. I'm going to add this to our sauce that we made earlier. Now we add the last of it. And this is our shrimp pasta, ladies and gentlemen. Nothing like the smell of fresh shrimp pasta. We're going to plate our pasta. So you just put a little bit of salad on the side. We're going to top our pasta with a little bit of Parmesan cheese. An easy way 
to make Thousand Island dressing. Here's a little mayo. Good old fashioned ketchup. Let's add a little pepper and about two pinches of salt. You just stir it all together. And voila, that's our shrimp pasta. Okay, Ozzy, take a taste. That's some good food, baby. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna take mine and go. This is Ozzy. Damien. Buckingham News. See you guys later. This was our last broadcast for this term. We will be back in January. Thank you for watching.